Okay, so to find out which parametric equation matches the graph, we can make a table of x and y values, except we just also have a column for t. Plug in a value for t, you can pick. Um, I'm going to pick t equals 0 because that's usually easiest to work with. So if I plug in 0 into this equation here, um, that's 0 minus 3, that makes negative 3 for x. If you plug in 0 over here, that's 1 plus 4, that makes 5 for y. We should see a dot at negative 3 on the x, 5 on the y. But since we don't see that, we can eliminate this option. So that's good. We got one down. Let's check out the next one. If you plug in 0 in for t, uh, we get 5 for the x, because e to the 0 power is 1. 1 plus 4 makes 5. And then if we plug in uh, t equals 0 here, we get y equals 0. So at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the x, we're expecting to see 0 on the y. That's not happening. We don't have a the the blue graph doesn't cross there, so we can eliminate this option. And same thing, let's try out zero. You could try a different number if you want. You could plug in one or two. But if we plug in zero and for t into this relationship, we get out uh, this is one plus four, that makes five for the x. Plug in zero here, you get negative one for the y. So one, two, three, four, five on the x, negative one on the y. We should have a dot there. So I think we found our answer. Let's just confirm it by plugging in zero. If you plug in zero, you get five for x. Uh oh. Um, if you plug in zero, that's e to the zero, which is one. One plus four makes five for the x. If you plug in zero here, zero minus three. Oh, I messed up over here. That's what happened. If you plug in 0 over here, 2 times 0 makes 0. 0 minus 3 makes negative 3. That is a possibility. So, shoot, we can't eliminate this one. Okay. Uh, so it's one of these two. They both give us the same value if we plug in 0. What else could we plug in? Uh, let's try plugging in just one. This one goes with this one. This one goes with this one. And maybe I'm going to draw these these values over here so I don't get them confused. T, X, and Y. Hopefully we just need one more. And we got T, X, and Y. Let's plug in T equals 1 and think about what kind of values we're getting out. That means X is going to be 4 plus E to the negative, t, uh, negative second power. And y is going to be if you plug in 1, 2 minus 3 makes negative 1. Uh, and over here, if you plug in 1 in for t, x is going to be, oh, sorry, this one is positive 2. This is one, uh, 4 plus e to the negative second. And then y is also going to be negative 1. So these are close. The only difference is the x coordinate, um, if you check out e to the second in your calculator, e is like 2.7 something something. It's kind of like pi, where it's a number where the decimals keep repeating. Um, I think it's roughly 2.71. So if we take e, which is roughly 2.71, and we square it and then add it to 4, this value for x is roughly 11.344. So if you go to 11.344, you should go down 1 and have a dot on the graph. That's not happening, right? So we can eliminate this option. But over here, if you convert this to a decimal value, and I should, oh, I do have E right here. That's two, I should have said 2.72, I guess. But uh, take E, raise it to the, uh, to the negative second power. So I'm going to hit this key, and then press 2, and then make it a negative 2 for my exponent. And then add that to 4. We should, at 4.13 on the X, we should be at negative 1 on the Y. So 4.13, negative 1, that's, that is possible. Okay. So uh, the only last possible option is here. So with all these problems, it's about plugging in some values, use a process elimination to get down to the right value. And then you could also use decimal equivalents there um, to, to whittle it down to the final answer. But pick, start with some numbers that are nice and easy, because like when we plugged in t equals 0, we were able to eliminate a lot of them really quickly.